Bridget, I like your background. It looks like a cloud forest walk through the treetops. Is that right? Yeah, it's kind of a, you can see. That's so cool. Kind of a rope ladder going to trees. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's actually a, it's a physical thing. It's not an, um, as you see, I don't fade away in the background. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> it's a big print from Ikea, so it's come in handy for this Zoom world we live in now. <laughs> well, it's always good to be part of built standing on a bridge. Yeah, exactly. Well, I guess we can start. We just got the go ahead. So uh, uh, this is the Environmental Commission meeting. And uh, let me welcome uh, Bridget Booth, who's going to talk to us today about the Hazlitt Middle School Green Infrastructure Project. And uh, I think we're all kind of real interested in kind of how things have been going and where we're at. So uh, Bridget, why don't you briefly explain uh, uh, who you are and tell us about the project. We're real interested in hearing about it. That's great. Thank you so much for having me tonight. Um, so yes, I'm Bridget Booth and I teach eighth grade science at Hazlitt Middle School. This is my third year there. Um, so I have yet to experience a normal full year since my first year there. We had the pandemic hit in the spring and then last year was a virtual year. And then of course this year, we're doing what we're doing. So um, I was really thrilled to, it was my assistant principal that gave me the heads up about the, um, the green infrastructure grant. And I had already at that point had my eye on this interior courtyard that, um, was a, a completely neglected space in the in the middle school. It's right outside of my my science classroom windows, and so I just had been looking at that, um, thinking, oh, that's just a gem of a space, and what could we do with it? Um, my background is um, a, a big part of it is environmental education. I got started as a teacher, um, kind of non traditionally at Waldemar Nature Center, so. Um, I started out as, as an environmental educator and then, then went back and got my teaching certificate. And so bringing kids outside is a huge part of how I teach science. Um, and I just think that's really critical to, um, especially now, given all of the environmental issues that we face, not just in Michigan, but just, you know, as a, a national and global community as well. Um, so this this grant has um, given me some opportunities to to convert this interior courtyard into um, kind of an outdoor classroom space. That's the goal for the project: is to create a space that um, students can use, but teachers can you know bring classes out into the space and use it as a classroom, but in um, you know a roofless outdoor setting, even though it's completely enclosed by um, the school. So let me share my screen really quickly and um, show you some pictures. Hopefully this works out. Can you see it? All right, great. Um, all right, so this is not my normal laptop. So hopefully it, oops, it's working out okay. Okay, um, so, kind of got started with um, identifying some some teachers that were interested in, in working on this with me. Um, I'm gonna move my Zoom window over here so I can look at you. There we go. Um, and so kind of identified the teachers and started brainstorming about how, what, how this space could be used. Um, and then since it's a student-led project, um, started to work in, um, in April on figuring out which what, who my student team was gonna be. Um, so I teach eighth graders and um, so I introduced basically the idea of the project to all of my eighth graders and there was a certain number that were interested and kind of went through a little application process to, to be involved in the project. Um, I also happen to have um, a landscape architect that I've worked with in the past and she volunteered her services. It kind of just worked out magically that her kids went through Hazlitt schools. And so she had sort of a vested interest in helping with the project. Um, and she's actually worked for Michigan State and was one of the designers of the 4-H Children's Garden there. So she just has a lot of wonderful expertise. Um, and so she's, she's sort of our, our project consultant. So this is an image of her kind of um, doing a, an initial site analysis with the kids. 
um, spend some time introducing what green infrastructure is um, and why it's important. And so this is kind of uh, them kind of taking a look at, at that. Oops, I keep hitting the wrong thing here. This is not my laptop. My husband's laptop. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Um, so <clears throat> this was kind of a unique time. So this was in April. And um, so we were in a, on a hybrid schedule. So we were working with students both virtually um, and in person. So when we weren't um, together in the classroom, we were still working on the project. We did a lot of um, collaboration over Zoom and through Google Classroom. Um, so that was something, this was kind of an initial brainstorming that we did around like what were the elements that we wanted to include in the space. Um, and then using that input from students, uh, Deb, our landscape architect, was able to kind of start with a concept plan, a design plan for us. Um, and so one of the one of the biggest components was was the rain garden. So even though it's a, an internal space, um, there is a catch basin right in the middle of it. And so we, we identified that that would be appropriate to plant a rain garden around the catch basin to slow the water to, um, to keep it from just kind of dumping right down into that basin. Um, so we spent some time talking with the kids about what the catch basin is, where that water goes, really um, kind of digging into our local watershed and making sure the kids understood that whole process. And so then it was their job to research um, plants, what plants would be appropriate for the rain garden. Um, we really wanted to focus on native species as well as species that would attract pollinators. Um, so that's, you know, was kind of the initial plan. <clears throat> and then since then, um, you can see that we're working kind of at this point, we're in May. So get nice and warm. And since it was a fairly um, unused space for a long time, there was a lot of cleanup that had to happen, a lot of weeds. Um, so here they're pulling weeds from the cracks in the concrete. Um, you can see that there's a concrete slab. There's another one of those um, on the other side of the courtyard. So we had a lot of work there. Um, and here's just some initial work days that we had kind of getting it cleaned up out there. And during this time, we were also communicating with the, the school community. So we did that in a couple of different ways. Um, I had the kids create, we did um, announcements on Mondays and there was a slideshow that, that went through for, for every homeroom. And so they created um, regular slides that were updates for students about what the project was and where we were heading with it. Um, and we also created posters to put up on, um, in the hallway leading up to the courtyard so that people who maybe were seeing that there was something happening out there had some idea of the kind of work that we were doing. So a little bit of education around what is a rain garden and what's going on out here. Um, we had talked originally about doing some vegetable and, and, and fruits out there, but that has, um, that has evolved <laughs> a little bit. Just thinking about the, the, you know, the, the realistic nature of um, maintaining vegetables with students who are gone in the summertime. So that's shifted a little bit. Um, so we then kind of throughout the summer, um, you can see that my crew shrank a little bit. It was a little trickier to, to organize schedules in the, during the summer months, but we kind of did what we could to work throughout the summer on preparing some beds. Um, here the students are, are kind of, we talked about um, appropriate and natural ways to remove the grass around the catch basin that involved no chemicals. And so we were laying plastic and identifying the shape of the rain garden. <clears throat> so we spent some time on that. And then towards the end of the summer, um, really were, you know, had some prepared beds. We also identified a space closer to the building that's right outside of the counselor's office. Um, and we want that to be kind of a space that will be inviting for students who need to, to come outside just to maybe decompress. Um, we're really looking at this also in terms of um, not just being an outdoor classroom, but also being a safe space for students who are feeling anxiety. Um, 
there's a lot more of that this year. We're really focused on social emotional health for our students. And so the fact that this is an, an enclosed space, but still outside um, makes it an ideal setting for students to be able to pop out, take some deep breaths, maybe, you know, be able to look at some natural things and um, kind of recenter themselves. So that's been something that has it kind of increased in importance um, over these, these summer months and into this school year. And then you can also see that we've um, purchased the plants and um, the, the students enjoyed that process of, you know, selecting those. And, and um, we worked with Van Adas who who were very helpful. Um, just a list of some of the plants we've purchased. And um, again, focusing on some, some native species and things that are appropriate for rain gardens. So since then, um, I've got a new batch of students. I've got uh, a new eighth grade class and um, a couple of different entities that I'm trying to bring into the project. So the original crew is now at the high school and they're ninth graders and I'm, they're still engaged. Um, I had a couple in fact today join us at a conservation club meeting so I also run a conservation club at the school. And so I'm getting that, that group of students caught up on the project. And I also teach um, an elective called Eco Action, which is all around ecology and, and how students can take action to preserve the environment and to um, do something that's beneficial for their, their local space. So these are some students in that elective class and they were um, out there helping to, to make the rain garden space um, a little bit more ready. We planted a tree um, and they have actually gotten quite a bit of background um, about watersheds and the appropriateness of a rain garden in terms of dealing with, um, you know, how we handle land use and water contamination. Um, so now we are kind of getting plants in place. Um, we are you know, sort of Kind of positioning things and getting ready to, to get everything in the ground. We have more that we need to purchase. We're kind of identifying what we have now. Um, is it filling the space appropriately? And then we're going to be doing kind of a second round of plant purchasing along with mulch and some of the other you know parts and pieces of the project. Um, so here's kind of where we are now in terms of our, our site plan. Um, so you can kind of see this. So this is again, our landscape architect is preparing this for us, um, looking at what, what we've accomplished and then what needs to be done yet throughout October. Um, we still have some stumps that we need to get removed, which poses a challenge because of the limited, um, the way that we get into the courtyard is through the school building. And then there's just one you know regular size doorway to get out there. So getting heavy equipment out there has been a challenge. Um, so we're still kind of looking at that. Um, do we, can we work around the stumps or is it something that we need to investigate further? Um, we also are challenged with our water out there. Um, the, the spigot that used to be there is not functioning. And so I've been trying to work with the grounds crew to assess that to see if that's something that we can fix or if we need to come up with a different option for um, storing and watering plants. So our next steps are um, really to, to get everything in the ground in October. Um, we talked about when is the appropriate time to plant a rain garden and it certainly wasn't in the middle of July. So it actually worked out well because students were you know, kind of scattered on vacations and things like that. So um, looking at fall for getting the, the rain garden planted and um, everything sort of laid down. So really looking at October as being our heavy work month in terms of, of recruiting extra help. So we planned Wednesdays throughout the month of October to do some of the smaller jobs after school. And then we have a Saturday work day where we hope to kind of tackle some of the bigger elements that maybe um, could use some, some support. I've had multiple teachers and, and people within the school building offer help. And so this is kind of a way for everybody to, to pitch in a little bit um, on a Saturday work day. So some of the other things we'd like to include would be a small storage shed so that the gardening equipment can be kept right out there. Um, we do want to get kids thinking about composting, so a small manageable compost bin. And also, again, looking at that um, attracting wildlife component. 
Um, also thinking about how the space would be a great way to, to integrate student artwork. So looking at that in the future, um, not necessarily as part of, of this initial grant funding, but thinking about how we can work with, with the art classes and getting kids to integrate art in the space as well. Um, so kind of so, you know, some of the, the challenges that I've encountered, um, rain, <laughs> there's been a lot of it. So, you know, so a lot of our work time or, or, you know, dates that we had scheduled had to kind of be reworked. Um, you know, finding the time where, you know, I was available and, and getting everyone available, um, that was an issue. I've also, you know, some of the staffing has changed. And so I've lost one of the original teachers who was part of the team has since moved on from Hazlitt. Um, so kind of trying to identify a little bit more um, teacher help with that. Probably one of the biggest issues has been, you know, working on scheduling with the distant grounds crew. There's certain things that they wanted to do, um, like trim the tree and remove some of the, you know, the, the excessive weeds that were out there. So it was a little bit of a waiting game, trying to, to wait until we could get on their work schedule. Um, since it's an interior space, you know, people don't see it from the outside. It was a little bit less um, on the priority list, especially as they were gearing up for the new school year. So. Um, so since then, you know, we've had um, a lot more participation from, from the grounds, um, the Hazlitt grounds crew. Um, and then, of course, you know, the original team is in high school now. So they have a high school schedule. They're busy. They've got stuff going on. They're in the band. They're taking extra classes. Um, it's crazy how busy they are. So getting a new group of students oriented um, is taking some time to get them to, like, Here's what the project's about. Here's what green infrastructure is. So it's sort of like starting over with a new batch of kids. Um, you know, still trying to keep that original team involved, but um, you know, getting a new group of students oriented to the project and so that they're in a position to, to continue with the planning. Um, so that's kind of it in a nutshell. Uh, <laughs> a lot of talking there. So if, if anyone, you know, has questions or um, if there's something I didn't cover that you're interested in me answering right now, I'd be happy to do that if there's time. Okay, thank you, Becky. That was very interesting. And uh, I'm sure we're gonna have some questions for you. My, my, I, the question I've got is, how do you expect to kind of uh, use the space for actual classes once? It's well, I can think, um, of a million ways as a science teacher. Um, what I'm hoping is that it will actually be an opportunity to do um, some data collection. Um, one of the things we'd like to install out there is a weather station. So to get kids out there actually, you know, looking at some weather instruments, um, you'd be, you know, able to do like a quick, like check on, on cloud cover. Um, you know, we are hoping to incorporate more seating. So we're currently we have these cement benches, which a um, couple of them are in, in, in good shape, but we have a few more that are that need to be removed. They're just old and, and wobbly and unsafe. But thinking about seating so that, um, you know, a teacher could bring a class out there, you know, even for independent work or for reading or for just some quiet work, it's, it's getting a class outside on a nice day. Um, so my hope, once it's established, is to actually do some, some training with my coworkers about what could you use the space for um, so that they are more inclined to use it. Oh, great. That all sounds very good. Uh, questions from anybody? Just unmute yourself and go ahead and ask. Uh, Bill, go ahead. Yeah, thanks. That's uh, really Exciting! I'm I'm really uh, so happy to hear that uh, stuff going on, and there's so many ways that that can connect to what we're trying to do. And uh, thank you for bringing it to us. Thank you. As a past Hazlitt parent, uh, you know our kids are all grown up, but uh, uh, that that little space always seemed like a very promising, but not you know sufficiently. Um, exploited enjoyed space i'm sure it was when the school was designed it was hoped that it would become a you know a comforting um sort of uh reflective spot and so now it's wonderful to hear you 
making it moving it in that direction uh, to serve the students and I guess everybody in a sense. Um, I had a question about the stumps. Um, yeah. yeah. As a chemist, it is there are ways of uh, dissolving stumps, <laughs> uh, but uh, you may not feel like uh, dumping chemicals into the stumps. They're actually fairly relatively benign chemicals, but they do take it all does take a while. But the alternative is, I was wondering if the stump locations I didn't absorb your map fast enough, but could those be foundations for, for example, stools to sit on or um, or or other or things you could sort of hollow out to be um, essentially a pot that a you know that a, another plant could live in. Uh, I was just wondering whether they could be viewed as resources rather than as things to be just gotten rid of. Um, yeah, that's an excellent point. Actually, um, one of my students said that exact same thing today. Like maybe they could be a place to sit. Um, so they're not really huge. So you know. I don't know, maybe like that, and they have, so they're not, um, not like the base wouldn't be big enough to, to say make a seat out of or something like that. But I did have somebody else that I was talking to um, a couple weekends ago, um, you know, that said the same thing. Like maybe those could be places where you set something like a bird bath um, or some other element that would create interest in the space and serve a purpose. So then we don't have to worry about the removal. Really, the, the the hardest part about them is not the stump itself, but the, the roots that are there as well. It just, we have to kind of determine how hard it will be to dig around them um, because that kind of limits the, the space we have for getting some of those plants in the ground. Um, hollowing them out, I never thought about before. So that's, that's an interesting idea. So we'll be talking about that. What else can we do with those stumps? Well, if they're really solidly rooted, you can also imagine, you know, basically cranking some relatively large screw into them as a as a base for, I don't know, you know, the equivalent of a bar stool. Uh, not that you should have a bar stool, <laughs> but a stool, you know, of some sort. That'll really get uh, the teachers out there. <laughs> um, no, that's a great, that's a great idea. Um, we should definitely investigate that because, yeah, the getting a stump remover out there has just been a little bit. Yeah, it's one more thing. So I think you're right. I think we need to start looking at ways to work with them instead of against them. Anna has something to say. Yes, I, I really know nothing about this, but I've heard that you, you can grow, you know, mushrooms or other things on oh, yeah. stuff. So that could be a cool learning experience too. That's a great idea. Yeah, I have a couple students actually that have this, this fascination with, actually mushrooms are kind of popular right now. <laughs> They're sort of like they made them into pillows and like kids are just kind of into them. So that's a cool idea. We'll definitely you know, look into that. That's that's awesome. Kendra, did you have a question? Go ahead. Hmm. I wanted to say um, fantastic work, Bridget. Thank you for sharing it with hmm. us. And I just love like having students getting connected back to nature, using that space as a grounding and calming space and caring and you know just watching um, the wildlife out there as it grows and even the stump could serve as you know all, I like all the ideas but just even as space for um, you know uh, in between space for plants to you know not expand to as well so um, you know what you're doing is in line with all the work that we're kind of doing on the environmental commission and um, and related to wetland education and um, native plantings and all that kind of stuff so uh, the thing I have to ask you is that I'm aware of some Hazlitt students that are interested in Earth Club, um, certainly at the high school level, and it sounds like you've really been working with some of those students in the middle school level. And um, so how do we, you know, Oakmas has a Earth Club going already. Um, is there a way to get that going? And, you know, Hazlitt, maybe this is like the start, you know, because there's the visual. And how can, how, how can we grow what you're doing um, here? Yeah, so is is Earth Club like a conservation club? Is that or is that like a, a a specific program or is it something that's you know kind of like a, a, at the school level? I believe it's at the it's at the school level, but we're okay. also yeah, it's some so and there's students that are on the commission here that can kind of speak to that a little bit, but I'm aware of has so I, this can be a conversation for another time, but I just want to um, say thank you for the work that you're doing, you know, they have the visuals 
and um, you know we'll be looking at doing more of this kind of stuff in in the community. So thank you. That would be great. And yeah, I would love to connect with any other uh, student entity. Um, I think it's just really great for kids to know that these opportunities are there. And again, you know, really the whole point of this is to empower kids to be the problem solvers. Um, there's there's a lot of things that they're inheriting um, that they you know they need to know how to how to have environmental solutions and um, so that's really the goal of the space is to kind of show them that um, but also yeah to create a beautiful space within the school building um, that can serve multiple purposes so so great yeah I would love to talk with anyone about collaboration hey, Tom go ahead uh, yeah thanks uh, again I uh, just want to echo previous comments about uh, a great project that sounds really exciting. Just a, a couple of questions. Uh, one is, uh, it sounds like most of the planting is is going to be uh, done this month, but I just wondered what the, the final time frame, frame was for kind of finishing the initial project. And then secondly, um, kind of how students will be involved going forward, will they be doing like uh, weeding projects or making sure that uh, the area is, is uh, you know, kept up and things like that? Yes, that's a great question. Um, so yeah, in terms of timeline, I'm hoping, yeah, that, that most like the planting is done by the end of October so that we've got things in the ground before it starts getting too cold. Um, and, and, you know, I know the grant, um, kind of the grant parameters were to, to have the initial funding sent by November-ish. So that's kind of what we're aiming for there, to have project completion, at least at this point, for what this particular grant is funding, um, done by early November would be the goal. Um, in terms of student in involvement, again, I'd like it to be a space that we kind of continue to look at what else can we do. Um, one of the things that I'd like to, to do is um, establish a, a bird feeding area. Um, I'm also um, kind of part of a, a, a citizen science project through Cornell um, Institute where they are looking at students to monitor feeders to keep track of bird species. So they you know, have an idea of what birds are, are in the area. So I would look at that as, again, that da data collection piece where um, students can go out and, and monitor for you know, set times throughout the day and you know, watch the feeders and, and see what kind of species are there, um, which also just makes them a little bit more aware of, of, of birds in the area. Um, and then, yeah, to establish some, some things where it would be you know, pretty regular routine for, for students to go and either collect the data, um, again, maybe do some, some composting. That's an area we need to explore yet in terms of how that would work. Um, but yeah, regular weeding, maintaining, um, and kind of, you know, thinking about what are some future things we could do um, to keep the kids in, engaged. We really do love the idea of being able to plant, um, you know, not a, a big vegetable garden, but something where kids can grow it, harvest it, and do something with it, even if it's something as simple as like pumpkins, right? So like at the end of October, there's some little pumpkins that they could do something with. I just, you know, that, uh, you know, human earth connection is something that we really um, want to encourage. And uh, so those are the types of things that we're thinking about as well. Great. Thanks. Hey, Bill, yeah. did you have a question? Oops. I was just going to say real quickly, something you could do is harvest the seeds. And because we're working on um, developing a yeah. Native planting throughout the community, which we'll talk more about. I don't want to spend time on it here, but that might be something you could do. That would be one. Yeah, that would be very cool. They would love that. Um, someone else suggested, you know, the possibility of a monarch wave station. Um, so, you know, planting some milkweed and kind of hoping that that encourages is, um, monarch populations. Again, being in the interior of the building, it's kind of hard to say. Um, so will they find it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, so lots of lots of ideas. And I, I feel like this is the type of project, like, you know, thanks to you um, funding this initial startup, it, there's so many different layers and, and ways that we can kind of add to it each year. 
And it's really developed a lot of interest, even with just, you know, teachers who have been there a long time saying, oh, thank goodness, something's happening out there. Like, it's, it's such a waste of space. Um, all of a sudden, now everyone's like, hey, let me know if you need help. Um, so it's just really cool that it sort of turned into this, you know, kind of like, oh, yeah, what else can we do with this? Um, and that social emotional piece, I think, is, is, you know, just really become obvious these last few years. And um, I'm really looking forward to creating a calming space as well. And we all know the, the healing powers of nature. And I think having it where it's inside the building still is makes it kind of ideal for that. So, um, yeah, pretty exciting. I was just going to say, you so said you were mentioning the issue of water, water availability. And so I was wondering what's the, uh, you know, could you use a rain barrel? Is there is there room for a, a a spot where you could you know put a rain barrel in a corner or something like that, and that would be uh, addressing that in a proactive way, that, in a way that kids can do something about, as opposed to waiting for sort of the pros. Yeah, we have talked about that, and that was actually one of the original ideas. Um, there's no real down spouts or gutters into the space so we'd have to kind of think about how we would um, efficiently collect the water um, i'd also have to make sure because i know like in consulting with our landscape architect she said there are some there's some properties that don't really love rain barrels because of this this you know having stagnant water on the property um, but i think if it's one that you know allows you to kind of have changeover or you know Ticket or something like that. It seems like that would be a pretty reasonable thing to do. So that is one of the things that we have yet to really investigate, um, or just having some other kind of yeah water storage out there, so that you know we, there's a door that goes into um, the art room, and so right now that's where I've been <laughs> I've been getting water. So it's kind of a hassle, but you know there is a, an old spigot out there, so I'm really hoping that that's something that that can be taken care of. Um, yeah, we will be looking into that. Still, kind of discussing the rain barrel idea. So, my other question is: Do you, do any of your students or their families or whatever have you know a drone? Because there are a lot of people have drones these days. Mm. I would love to see a photo from above, having seen the map. Uh, yeah, that would be cool. And I I'm willing to guarantee there's somebody who's got a drone that would be willing to do that for us. So that's a great idea. We'll certainly try to do that. Thank you again. That sounds wonderful. Other questions or comments? Uh, Courtney. Hi, Bridget. This is so very exciting. I'm so, I just want to thank you for taking on this project. This is really exciting. And as a scientist, I'm so glad that we're looking from a scientist teacher's perspective and using this as a, like Ned had mentioned, like, just using this as a usable space and as an educational space. So I wanna thank you so much for that. Um, uh, the, the idea like science is so very important, but the, the fact that you're looking at the mental health component of the usable space is so very cool. Like I just, this, that's amazing. You, you're doing amazing things, but then thinking about that in a, in a separate sense of the mental health for our students and um, I, I, I know I have kids back in school this year. There's one on the board today or on the commission. Um, and it's, been, <laughs> it's been a struggle for all of us, right? For the teachers, for yeah. the parents, for the faculty, for the students. And that's fantastic. I just, I really, I really do uh, appreciate everything you've done. It's fantastic. I'm really excited to bring this back to the board and, and let them know all of the work you've done. Um, the one thing I just I wanted to mention, and I hope I'm not speaking out of turn, John or, or Leroy, but um, we have been approved for additional grants. Um, so you mentioned there's additional work that may need to be done um, past November, and um, I would uh, encourage you to apply for the additional grants um, for, like you said, the exterior, you know, hose bib or whatever we need for you to do what you have to do to get water to that area or seeding to that area. Um, I, I just, I just want to let you know that there's additional funds and, um, you know, it goes through the commission and I have, you know, it, but that, that that's out there. And I think if, as far as sustainability, um, this is a fantastic idea and you've done so much work already. And 
So I just want to thank you. I think this is fantastic. Wonderful. Thank you. And that's really great to know. So yeah, it's, I'm sure as we identify um, other things, then it would be nice to know that, that maybe there is more funding available. So that would be great. Other comments or questions? Recorder? Me again, I'm so sorry. Um, so I'm wondering, um, Leroy and or John um, how, in the commission, how you feel about, um, I think this would be a really, I mean, Bridget did such a good job of explaining this. I think the board would really like to see everything you've done. And uh, we do presentations um, in, the, in the board meetings as well. Um, I just, this is very exciting, and I think they would really like to see all of the work you've done so far, and I'd just like to invite you to a presentation, and if you're willing, I can, I can ask the supervisor to put you and or whomever you, you know, assign onto uh, the presentation, um, maybe next board meeting or the next, it doesn't have to be anytime soon, but I think they would really like to see what you have, you've done already. That would be wonderful. I would I would be happy to do that. And I've also talked to the original crew about possibly um, maybe joining me on a, a presentation, maybe like have a one or two students there to help explain. Um, I think that'd be a great experience for them to be able to, to share the work themselves. Um, so yeah, we'd love to do that. They would love that. They would love to hear from you and from the students and everybody involved. So um, awesome. fantastic. Okay, I'll work with Leroy and John on that then. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that all sounds great. Wow. Anything uh, further? Um, yeah, Kendra. I just wanted to um, echo what um, Courtney was saying, and I'm hoping that this is just a start. You know, like I know that there's been flooding at the schools, at both schools. Yeah. Um, you know, perhaps creating rain gardens <clears throat> and, and, you know, getting more students involved and um, you know, looking at some natural approaches to address some of these issues, which is, you know, part of some of our initiatives here too, as far as, you know, um, you know, wetland buffers and um, as far as rain, you know, native plantings and all that stuff, which we're going to be a year long kind of campaign on that. So thank you for starting the work. So thank you for starting getting the visuals at the schools because you have, you'll have more eyes you get more eyes there in the community looking at it because you hit by the very nature of having your students there, you're going to have the parents there, and then it just can build out from there and there and there. So thank you. Yeah, that's exactly right. Actually, that's one of the things I did with my elective class was we walked the perimeter of the building after learning about watersheds and land use and um, how water becomes contaminated. And that's one of the things we talked about, like, this is an area of the school that flooded. Um, what do we notice? And so it's it's really cool to kind of see how they can kind of directly apply those concepts to like real problem solving and in a way that's like good for us and good for the environment. It's a win-win. So um, yeah, I'd love to do more of that for sure. I was just going to reiterate that issue of the flooding because of course the high school had yeah already you know tens of thousands of dollars worth of damage because of flooding. Uh, on their new gym floors. Mm -hmm. And it all comes down to, you know, people not understanding how these things work. <laughs> so you're, and now your students are there in the high school so they, they can look back at the lessons they learned. I think, anyway. Yeah, thanks. absolutely. Okay, anything else? Uh, let's see, Bridget, thank you very much. This has been very, uh, interesting very inspiring and uh we look forward to you talking to the, the township board too to kind of uh share you know, what you've done along with some of your students that's going to be marvelous um and uh, yeah thank you for taking time out to come to us to uh kind of give us an update and with that i guess we'll go to the uh the regular meeting uh let's see uh approval of the agenda is there anything anybody wants to add to the agenda? I don't see anything. Can I get a motion to approve the agenda? Thank so you, Bill. Let's see, do I get a second? Second. Thank you, Tom. Mm -hmm. uh, and thank you, Bridget. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. And uh, let's see, so all in favor of approving the agenda, please just raise your hand. Okay, any opposed? 
Okay, uh, moving right along uh, on to the approval of the amendments. Is there anybody that would like to uh, add anything or correct anything in the minutes? Okay, seeing no hands raised. Well, yeah, Kendra. Well, I just want to make a, a change um, under um, environmental justice uh, about there being uh, connections between um, flooding and uh, wetlands. Uh, that was kind of, I sent that to Leroy um, earlier in the, or last month or whatever. Kind of yeah. Okay, with that uh, addition, uh, can I have a, a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Second. Thank you, Anna. Okay. Uh, just raise your hand if you'd like to approve the minutes, please. Okay. Any opposed? Okay. Moving right along. Uh, public remarks. Uh, is there anybody uh, out there who would like to make remarks? Okay, uh, new business, uh, consent agenda and other ideas for more productive and enjoyable meetings. Uh, Valerie, do you want to uh, kind of introduce this? <clears throat> well, uh, yeah, we kind of uh, hashed it over, I guess a little bit, but um... The ideas for the, the repeat reports, um, the League of Women Voters in Lansing are, are doing this and finding that they can save time for, for discussion or more speakers or whatever by uh, having routine reports sent with the draft agenda as part of a uh, what's called a consent agenda. And then if everybody reads them and they're okay with them, then that lump of reports are uh, voted on you know to accept them as is uh, so that someone doesn't have to say out loud what they just wrote about and sent in you know just just save time it, ju it just meant for the routine uh, issues nothing that needs to be discussed so okay yeah uh, what, what do people think uh what do folks think about the idea Courtney. I think it's a fantastic idea, Valerie. Um, and I'm not, and certainly not an expert on what is included in the consent agenda. Um, but yeah, if there's any way that we can consolidate the way that we can approve things that are, um, you know, consistent or going forward, I think that's great and, and leave more time for actual environmental um, discussion. So I would, I, I appreciate you bringing that forward. I think it, what it would require, I wasn't sure if the different, um, you know, like the the, um, the different boards that different people are monitoring, if there is a written report already or not, because what a consent agenda would require is like a paragraph from each person, like what their report would be, so that can be read ahead of time with the draft agenda. And then they'd be all lumped together and you vote them in. And if somebody said, um, I'd like to take a certain one out because I want to discuss it, then the rest of them could be consent agenda in or whatever, if that's a word. Um, so yeah, it just it just eliminates redundancy. It does require people to write out their report ahead of time, but that'll help Leroy, I think, and um, probably help us all just keep keep focused a little more. I can um I can talk with the clerk to see what, you know, what the rules and regs or what. A normalcy is and see what the clerk has to say about that and maybe bring that back um, if, if that's helpful. That would be helpful. And, uh, you know, we're already doing this with uh, Leroy's report, right? Because he gives a more detailed report. And when he gets, we get to that part of the agenda, he kind of highlights some things. So I think that's basically kind of what we're talking about. We would give uh, everybody an opportunity to. Uh, Hopefully, people kind of uh, put in a few sentences in this uh, Google Doc that uh, I saw the way it set up, uh, and then we could just go through the list. And if people want to say anything or add something, that'll be their chance. We can move down the list of board liaisons and uh, different committees fairly quickly and have more time for other discussion. Leroy? Yeah, I guess it's just a rather than sort of be a, on the spot at the end of our meetings with a quick report, feel like you have to come up with something, just maybe an opportunity to think about 
um, what might make sense to share with the commission and what <clears throat> ahead of time, what might be up for discussion um, and just a little bit more intentional about those updates because they're certainly, we have a, such a broad spread of involvement throughout the township. Um, I think we're already pretty much doing this, but yeah, for me, it's it's easier rather than go into all the 10 things I'm doing, just uh, say, well, take a look at this report and what do you have questions on or where do you want more detail? I'm not sure anyone looks at my report ahead of time, but maybe if we get used to this Google Doc, um, it'll we'll find uses for it that we we're not necessarily aware of right now. And it does have the advantage of, uh, you know, you kind of, Leroy, you kind of direct us to the Google or send out the, uh, the report. It gives us a chance to uh, uh, kind of maybe, if we have questions, kind of think about it before the meeting so we can kind of uh, ask. Uh, I think that was an example of what we'd be looking at, Ned. I just wanted to comment, you know, we're all TV stars, you know, and of course, uh, you know, there is just that one little, you know, the, the one and a half people who will look at us at three o'clock in the morning on Helm TV and, uh, you know, get their information that way. So, uh, the, you know, those people may not read, but they may hear on TV. I, of course, I'm being facetious. No, I, I, I totally like the idea of um, summarizing and I agree with Leroy also that it allows, especially as a guilty party in the sense of you know, coming to these reports sometimes a little less prepared than I should be, uh, the bringing the intention and doing it ahead of time I think actually has significant advantages. And most of the things are summarized either in the Green Gazette or in other available reports anyway. So things that would matter to the public. Tom, go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, I think it makes sense as well. Um, I guess my only question would be, would these uh, reports uh, also be available to the public who might have an interest in following the Environmental Commission? Um, kind of kind of a similar comment to, to Ned, I guess, and I, I think he was being facetious, but, um, you know, will uh, people have the same access to the written reports as they would to the verbal reports during the commission meeting. And I think, you know, as long as that's the case, then I think it's a great idea to be more efficient with our time. Yeah, I'm kind of assuming, and Leroy can correct me if I'm wrong, that, you know, that, that information gets incorporated into the minutes, which I uh, think is posted on the website. Is that correct, Leroy? Well, this is the first time that we've done this Google Doc, um, mm -hmm. but we definitely have a link to it. Um, so, and are, the, have, are yeah. the minutes are our minutes from the meeting posted on the website? Yeah. Well, okay. Well, that that I mean that that material can be incorporated into the minutes, so then it's it'd be fairly easy to find on the website. Mm -hmm. I just had one other quick thought. Um, we had talked about having sort of next steps for some of our projects or some of our committees, teams. Maybe this is also an opportunity to think, or, or even for us at, on our agenda, maybe we can also <clears throat> use it as a creative way to think about the next steps and articulate the next steps for some of these groups, which which might be more useful than just what we've done. It's like, what's coming up and how can I get involved or where do I need help? That type of thing. So I'm just thinking out loud here, but <clears throat> maybe I'll, I'll create another um, column that could be next steps for these various groups. Good um, point. Jen, Valerie? Yeah, Jen, I'm wondering, I think these, these uh, notes from everybody that's observing a committee or whatever that would be part of this consent agenda, I think it would have to go out with the, the draft agenda so that people know ahead of time what's being, you know, what will be discussed or what was just lumped together and approved. Like, otherwise, they're not given any notice, mm -hmm. you know. If, 
Yeah, I, I think that's a good point, Valerie. That's kind of where I was trying to go and not really saying it appropriately. But um, yeah, I, I, I would agree. I think um, anybody that's providing a written report would need to have a deadline so that Leroy could incorporate that into the draft agenda so everyone has that information. Yep, Anna, go ahead. Yeah, I think this is a great idea, and I'm I agree with the deadline. And I, you know, I'd like to say, you know, potentially there's a deadline for getting your summary in, and then letting Leroy know, like, oh, and I also have this discussion topic. Like, if if you do have a discussion topic for your area, but that way we're building the, you know, we're well, we're building the entire agenda. Kind of through that process. Kendra. Overall, I, I like the idea. However, um, those of us that are doing a lot of extra work on the outside, it's going to require a lot of extra work prior to the meeting, you know, to write this stuff up in advance. So I suppose the deadline would assist and and highlighting um, issues that we can talk about during the, the meeting that are important to do. So, um, you know, for me, I, I can see how this could be helpful, more efficient use of time if there's more um, things that are just, you know, short kind of things, but if it's longer kind of things, um, to me, there's parts of it that feel burdensome. Yeah, the other thing too, uh, you know, the uh, anybody who's kind of working in an area, you know, if, uh, if you might just put a few sentences in your kind of report, but if you feel there's a topic obviously that needs to be discussed, we could, you know, send it to Leroy to uh, put under either new or old business. So that's part of the, the actual agenda with respect to whatever the topic is. So that can be part of the process. Other I, comments? Yeah, I, I think it works the other way too, that if, if you have some kind of documents or big hunks of narrative that you'd like people to be made aware of and maybe you would not have it wouldn't have been something you would ever discussed out loud at the meeting because maybe it's too much or whatever but maybe you think it's worth sharing I mean it, it could be part of that written report I mean not for you to do a lot of work I mean if it's a copy and paste or forward or something like that a link um, to an article or whatever to add context to whatever it is you know you're you're reporting on Well, uh, let me uh, let me just ask for a, uh, we don't have to have a motion or anything, I think, but let's let me just ask for a show of hands who thinks it's a good idea. Okay, does anybody have any uh, uh, issues or concerns? If you do, just kind of raise your hand and then we can talk about it. Yeah, Courtney. Not an issue nor a concern, just wondering if maybe it's a possibility that we could pilot it and then kind of maybe revisit it and make sure it's working and uh, I don't know, like a few meetings or whatever. Yeah, let's let's plan on good. That's an excellent idea. Let's uh, this whole thing is a work in progress, right? Uh, so, uh, yeah, let's plan to do it for the next meeting. And uh, good point, Courtney. Maybe we'll make adjustments or change how we do it. But uh, uh, for the next meeting, we can kind of start doing this and then just see how it goes. Um, okay. Uh, anything else? Let's see. Okay. Uh, uh, I just want to say uh, I'll send out three or four reminders the week before and the week of just in case you miss it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> just kidding. We are part of the pilot, right? Part of the pilot. <laughs> we, we all need reminders. Thank you, Laura. Uh, old business, uh, wetland education and outreach campaign. Well, uh, I've got to go, go ahead. Go ahead, Kendra. I just, um, I'm, we're getting ready to send the, the letter and the brochure out uh, in the next day or two, hopefully, at least by early next week. And all of you have seen that. So thanks for all your edits. I think it was better as a group project, although it took a little bit longer. Um, involved staff and uh, s several of you. And um, 
as mentioned earlier today in the green dialogue, we're, we're working on a sort of a fall tips fact sheet. And if you've got any of your favorite fall landscaping tips that you'd like to add to that, um, feel free to chime in. Um, and then we had some good ideas that came up at the green dialogue. Um, and then we'll be talking about November, next steps in November. And um, Kendra has, you wanna just say a little bit about that, Kendra? Uh, so I, first of all, I just want to say thank you to everyone who, who worked on this. I want to thank, um, you know, folks at the township, you know, um, that, you know, started this letter um, uh, and, uh, you know, those, everyone supporting that and giving this education out to the community. It's very important education. So I want to um, thank everyone for that. I think, um, you know, we've shared what the wetland ordinance is, the um, uh, water future um, buffer ordinance. Um, this is a nice way that this has been written, um, you know, starting with Denise and Derek, um, who have, um, and then, you know, uh, you know, Leroy and, um, you know, uh, several folks um, working on this letter. So I'm really grateful for everyone's assistance in it. So um, I think it's nicely written. I think that, you know, we've got, you know, those, uh, you know, what the importance of wetlands are, the simple do's and the simple don'ts. And I think you can, you know, see those on there. And um, so, you know, the next steps really kind of are this once this gets out um, is, you know, what's going to happen next. Um, and we're developing, a, you know, a, an education campaign, a year long education campaign kind of with the build back the buffer. Um, and we have some, you know, this is some of the part of the October parts of things, you know, Leroy mentioned some stuff, Emma's working on some things. And then November, we're going to be, I, I think we can talk more about the November stuff later on, but those are going to be kind of clean up days, but like, you know, fall landscaping, um, some of, you know, kind of what Bridget was already talking a little bit about starting with some of the, um, you know, different projects to be planted, um, not mowing, things like that, native planting. And, and with the, with the whole goal of putting, uh, doing native plantings to assist bringing back those wetland buffers to help with flooding. You know, I think we have to pay attention to the flooding issues that we had. There's no doubt, like, you know, the amount of rain that we've been getting and how um, to, uh, how we can assist the community with it in these kinds of ways. I want to thank everyone who's been involved with it. And then the next steps um, would be you know, the letter's going out and then when calls come in, um, you know, then what's going to happen with the calls and how people at the township are going to be handling those calls and how those are going to be tracked. Hey, does anybody have any questions or comments about uh, what's going on? Yeah, Courtney. Sorry. Um, clicky on mute. Um, I will thank you, Kendra, for all of that. And I, I would agree, like, thank you all for working on that. I think this is going to be a really good educational piece. Um, and I know Leroy and I have discussed a little bit, like, how do we prep the staff for these calls and how do we make sure that we're giving valid information when they do call? So, um, I know we'll work on that and, and make sure that that's happening, um, but it's a very good point, Kendra, like we can put out the information, but how are we gonna make sure that the education coming, that questions coming into the township were providing a consistent message. So I think that's a good point. And um, Leroy and I have talked about it and I know Kendra, you as well. So um, yeah, I think a little bit of follow-up on that would be fantastic. Okay, other uh, questions or comments? Uh but I just want to say a couple of other things, you know, it's about, um, you know, educating the community, educating the staff, um, you know, educating contractors. You have to think about those in all kinds of different ways, but, um, you know, to track the calls that are coming in so we can better edu be better informed about how to educate everyone moving forward, I think would be really helpful. So I'm not sure how that can get set up, um, you know, where those calls are going to go and who's going to track it. But um, I look forward to hearing how that can happen and perhaps you know, like Courtney and Leroy can, um, sounds like they'll be working on that. So thank you. Um, one, of, one of the intents is also to sort of uh, lead by example. 
So highlighting projects in the community where people are reestablishing their buffer strip or doing native plants. Uh, some of you might have examples or pictures or, or just know of sites in your neighborhoods that might be good um, things to share with others. I think people get inspired by seeing something in their backyard. So we hope to populate the green map with some of these residential commercial examples of green infrastructure and um, native plantings. So put on your thinking cap about what excites you in your neighborhood or what, what are some examples and please share addresses and uh, pictures if you have the opportunity. Ned. Along those lines, Leroy, uh, so you were talking about a, a positive thing, you know, I agree with you that storytelling is one of the most powerful ways for people to uh, get a message much more than in some way. I mean, I love this brochure, but it's, it's kind of as, as an educator who sometimes spends too much time kind of talking about the framework and the theory and all, uh, I think for a lot of people, stories, stories are better. I think if we also offered stories of um, you know people whose basements flooded because it was clear that um, water management wasn't set up right. Uh, I think you know people respond to that kind of drama as well. And I, not that I want to be pointing fingers uh, in the sense of blaming pe people, but saying, we, I mean, we just had in the last month and a half we've had two major rain events or two months anyway uh that were shockingly fast i, I rode my bicycle through one of them uh and uh and i think that you know certain people felt those and it would be nice to just talk about how these things we're promoting would help to move things in the opposite direction and also just draw you know just promote um, community desire to uh, awareness and, and desire to um, make ourselves a little bit more resistant to those kinds of problems. So if somebody has a, you know, a, a dramatic flood story, uh, that I think also would be interesting. Like yesterday, I was riding my bicycle just because I needed to be outside. And uh, I came up the red cedar and the red cedar was observably rising at an at a pace that i you know where standing in one place for five or ten minutes just talking to a friend i noticed it coming up uh, because somewhere upstream you know a whole lot of rain had dumped in a very short time and so those kinds of um, sort of dramatic observations help some people to believe that these things are real uh, even if they haven't directly experienced consequences. Good point. Anything, uh, anything else, uh, comments or questions or? Okay, let's uh, uh, move on to, uh, it looks like uh, Leroy's added uh, commissioner updates. That is new, right, Leroy? Yeah, part of the idea was uh, maybe there's some things that are going on in your lives. Uh, that, again, this is a learn as we go, but there might be something other than a committee work or subcommittee work that's going on in your life. Maybe you've got a, a worm bin that's in desperate help of recycling. Um, but just if, if there's anything um, that doesn't really fit into these uh, committee updates that you want to share, it just seems like it might be a nice thing, opportunity you know, for people to think about. We can add that into the consent agenda, but uh, this might be more of a personal way of um, of sharing something that might be helpful. I mean, with particular regard to something that might others might be interested in that's happening in your life. I don't want to extend the the um, meeting time more than anyone else does, probably. But if we had a couple of personal stories that people want to share that might be inspiring. Sure, but I think it's a good idea. Let's give it a try. I, I, I kind of pass, but uh, what I'm going to do is just go around the screen. Uh, people may see screens differently. So on my screen, uh, next person would be Anna. Anna, do you have anything to share? Well, I don't know if this is the right time exactly, but um, so 
I've, well, at least attempted to be a part of the organic waste um, group that's a part of the capital area sustainability partnership. So I think it's organic waste management or composting is the name of it. And um, we haven't really gotten moving on that, but I, I was thinking it would be nice to have a time to check in about I'd say food and organic waste during these meetings, or, you know, I know Valerie, Valerie and I are, will be meeting about this, uh, hopefully later this week. And, um, I'll also hopefully be meeting with somebody from the NRDC who's doing a lot of work with cities on food waste. Um, I've met with her before and, uh, and now hope to meet with her again, more about what we're doing with the CASP and, and with the commission. So, um, I'm not sure what the process is to, to be a standing agenda item or to be a committee and um, would like to put that out there and, and also maybe put Valerie, Valerie on the spot as being on a committee with me. Well, you know, I, I think that now you may have just kind of given us a good example of how commissioner updates are helpful. Uh, but if, if you do want to uh, obviously put an item on the agenda uh, just send a note to me and Leroy, or you know, if you if you want to actually form a task force or committee, that would be fine too. But do do you want to think about that, or do you want to actually go ahead and form a special committee to look into those issues? Valerie, you're on mute. I think it's slightly premature right now. I don't know what Anna thinks, but. Um, but the other suggestion was, um, especially if if you know somebody from NRDC that's kind of at the forefront of so much going on with food and um, composting, right? They have all those programs. It, maybe maybe someone could speak to us, right? I don't know yeah. what criteria is for our speakers, but um, we could learn a lot. I think um, if if you know we could find the right person. Do you, do you have a name to, to share with Leroy? Maybe. Maybe. Yes. So I've been in touch with Yvette Cabrera. Okay. You you want why don't you send that? Can you send that name and contact information to the role? I can. For a uh, future green team. That would be yeah. great. I, yes, I absolutely absolutely will. Yeah. Let me think about like in in terms of. A commission, you know, a, a group or not. Um, yes, it might be a little bit early. On the other hand, having a, you know, we don't have to give an update and having a standing agenda item might keep us focused on on getting to an update. Um, on the other hand, I can always reach out to Leroy and get on the agenda. So um, I'll just say that's, it's percolating and Valerie and I need to do some additional talking about where, where that's going and how to get it moving. Okay. Super. I think that's a, it's an important issue. And uh, Pam, no, did you have anything you'd like to share? Uh, no, not really. I will pass as well. Uh, Ned. Nothing pressing, unless I talk too much anyway. No, oh, I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> Although, uh, yeah. Actually, there is the one issue of, you know, okay. do we still have candidates applying? And, and this question of uh, that Bill and I both mentioned, you know, uh, although I enjoy being part of this group, I, I'm perfectly willing to do it ex officio if we bring in more um, high-powered people in the process. Uh, and so, any, anybody more high-powered than you and Bill, but uh, uh, Leroy, do we still have uh, <laughs> candidates kind of in the queue? Yeah, yeah. Um, people sort of remain in the queue until they want to be out. So uh, we would approach them if there was a, an official opening. Um, I think you all have seen the past applicants, so I would I would trust um, you guys to make the decision of what makes most sense to you, um, and just let us know when you're when you want to create an opening. And of course, you can still show up at the meetings. Just reflecting on some of the conversation that's you know in the past months or whatever, but the suggestion was made to increase the membership. I think that's an excellent idea. I don't know. I don't know how you do that, um, where where you start with that. And then John, you had also, we started talking about this and then got uh, waylaid, but you had made the suggestion about some people that are, uh, you know, with so much expertise in a really 
focus field of making a, you know, like a board of advisors. I forgot what you called it, um, but to be available to consult with, um, maybe, you know, make it a designation, <laughs> um, you know, not ambassadors. It, um, it, you had a good word for it, and I, I can't remember what it was, but a term for it. To, it the, um, for, for instance, Susan Maston, I guess, when she went off, you suggested that maybe um, having her available as a, you know, a subject matter expert kind of thing, but maybe make a category for that. I mean, you know, like there's a, a team of these people um, that would be wonderful to be recognized and that may want to weigh in or, or listen to the meetings or we go to them for, for help or whatever. Well, that's a good point. And certainly, you know, because Susan was on the Environmental Commission, so we, we, we know who she is. And if we uh, had some issues, uh, I don't think we would hesitate to contact her. Uh, maybe there's a more formal way to kind of structure that, too. I, I don't know. Um, but I mean, it could be a designated sort of group, maybe thinking along those lines that you, you know, I mean, you find people with so much expertise, but maybe they don't have time to go to you know, to a couple meetings a month or whatever, but they'd like to be involved and and you know, I don't know, they it'd be a great great to have such a thing. Yeah, resource it, people, subject matter matter experts. Yeah, that's a that's a good thought. Yeah, I guess we'll have to kind of think about how that might be structured and and uh, and, and certainly you know when we have uh, committees and task force, it doesn't just have to be us. It can be. Uh, uh, anybody from the community can be on those task force and committees. So that's another way to get people and experts involved when we have a, an area that we're uh, uh, having a committee to address. Certainly we can recruit other people and that makes it more manageable for those people if they're just uh, not having to attend the regular meetings, but participating in let's call it committee work. Um, yeah. uh, Ken, Ken, Kendra, did I... Yes. Okay, uh, Bernadette. Um, so I guess a few things have taken place. Um, so we had an Earth Club meeting today, and we've been like kind of separating into committees because we've had such a large turnout recently. Um, about I think maybe like fifty people or so. I'd assume. Um, so basically, I guess one of the bigger problems we like discussed today is like the pollution at OHS. Um, yesterday, we actually had our head janitor quit because of um, students and pollution um, hmm. at our school um, and with COVID and everything. So our school is kind of getting like a little bit out of control um, with that. And um, we also had the homecoming parade this past Friday and um, a lot of pollution was because of that. Um, I actually, I organized an event to go clean up all the trash through the parade route. And we collected about like nine, like full bags of trash um, through that. So, um, and a lot of it was like half eaten candy. It just like stuff that people just didn't want to throw away. So um, I guess that's one of the bigger issues that's taking place right now. But um, I guess besides that, another thing I wanted to mention is um, I know a few Earth Club members are also participating in a climate march that is on um, this coming Sunday from one to three. That is like, I believe some like MSU student created it, but um, it's going from like the painted rock at MSU to um, I think LS Teco. So, um, and I think like 40 or 50 people or so are signed up for that right now. So um, yeah, that's what we're also working on right now, but those are the big things. Okay, hey, thank you. That's all, that's all very interesting. Boy, uh, Valerie. Well, I, I was just gonna give a plug. Uh, we're gonna do more of this coming up soon, but the um, Solarize Meridian, that people in Meridian that are thinking maybe of solar and, uh, want to go through a group, um, uh, sort of a group think, <laughs> uh, and also perhaps get a group discount for, uh, for doing it with uh, uh, following through with a certain contractor that that's coming up. Um, so, you know, if there are listeners there that are 
are thinking about the pot, you know, that sol solarizing might be a possibility for them, then uh, put it on their radar and more to come or call Leroy and, but otherwise I know we'll be getting uh, advertisement out there, but it's, it's a big decision. So I think planting the seed as early as possible is good. So yeah, well, thank you. Thank you, uh, Luca. Yeah, I just wanted to reiterate, uh, the trash problem has been really, really bad um, at, during like lunchtime. Um, everybody just kind of leaves their stuff where the where it sits. And so they've been like doing PA systems every single time we go to lunch, you know, telling us to clean up our spots and stuff afterwards. Um, so like that, that's like our, our main big problem. But we do have like um, the, uh, I can't remember what class it is, but there's a class that comes in and they come in and pick up all that stuff and put the chairs away and stuff like that. So um, it's being worked on, but I could see how it would be such a stressor towards like the janitors at, at Okama. So it's like, a, you think of it like one, probably one out of four kids is leaving their trash that they ate lunch uh, just where they sat. And so it's, and kids don't usually just sit in the cafeteria too. So it's all over the school, um, but yeah. Wow, that is a problem. Wow. Annika. I uh, pass. But yeah, the trash problem is it's it's pretty serious. Brittany. Nothing personal, but uh Chair Sarver, would you mind me asking the students like what do you think could help with that the trash problem? Is there anything we as a com commission can do or parents or <laughs> you go ahead luca uh they're doing a really really bad job of telling us what not and what to do i mean we're a bunch of like high school teenagers and so <laughs> it seems like every single time that they bring up hey you got to throw away your trash it gets the problem gets worse um and i know like uh like just because like you know they're a bunch of kids are just being told what to do and then they just do the opposite and so um yeah it's a, I, I feel like there's there's a lot better ways that we can handle the situation um but like it, the way they're handling it right now by getting the students to go up and tell the rest of the class to throw all their stuff away is just not working yeah annika i think you wanted to say something um i was just going to suggest that like if if parents and like other people are like uh, I guess willing, maybe we could start doing like recycling at the school because so far, like it's usually just like just regular trash that everything goes into, and especially like outside that can overflow. And I've seen that happen. It's just a suggestion. Okay, Ber Bernadette. Um, I guess just to add to what they've said, like, um, I feel like also one of the problems is like low respect towards the janitors, which I don't know mm -hmm. if this is like anything the Environmental Commission can help with, but um. I've heard like a lot of students are being like extremely rude to the janitors and kind of like bewhittling them. So um, I feel like that is also an issue that might lead to the pollution in the school, so. That's bad. Yeah, Luca. Um, I also think that like um, a lot of kids don't know like the effort that the janitors put in towards the stuff. So maybe one way that we could uh, like you know, just get like a personal account from all the janitors on what, how hard their job has been lately because of what we've been doing. And so like, um, just because like, I know there's a lot of kids in the school who just don't think about, you know, the consequences of who's got to clean this up later. And so um, if we can get like, you know, firsthand accounts from the people who actually have to clean up the messes, it's like, uh, I feel like that can do, uh, that can be a lot better for the, for the kids. I was going to say essentially what you just said, Luca. One of the things, so my kids went through uh, Hazlitt, and one of the things that really contributed in a positive way to that issue was the fact that uh, a couple of the janitors, but one in particular, was just especially well loved by all the students. Everybody knew him, and and you know he was a, I mean, incredibly hard worker, but also somebody who the students developed some sense of identity with. Uh, and so I think that that was, I mean, he was he was grossly overworked, like essentially all janitors are, but that sense of, um, you know, we're all in this together uh, really made a difference, I think. One of the things that, and, and <laughs> I'm gonna sound really old, but 
the, school, the high school that I went to, which was the fancy prep school, actually, uh, we were required if it snowed, we were we shoveled the snow. If <laughs> in our dorms we had we had dorms, but we we had to you know take out the trash and so forth. And there was a sense of responsibility for our own space. And one of the things that you could offer is essentially a, a shadowing process of people having to go around with the janitor and serve as a helping team. Here in the chemistry department, we do that same thing. We have a couple of undergraduates who are the sort of co-sisters uh, of um, our, our building manager, who again, is grossly overworked, but these people develop not only respect for the process, but also serious skills. Uh, and so, uh, I, it's not something the environmental commission can talk about per se, but I just think there, there are ways to try to help build the, those bridges. Um, and I wish you the best of luck in, in helping to do them. Those are just thoughts. Moving along, uh, I think the board on good I uh, I put it, the link out for the um, for my update. Um, just to briefly, I wanted to thank Valerie and John and uh, Roger Everhart and um, Pete, Peter from um, uh, Oh gosh, Absolute Ab Absolute Solar for for helping with the the event at the um, <clears throat> farmers market. Um, let's see, this came quicker than I was expecting here. Um, there's some, hopefully be some pictures in the next Green Gazette. Um, we're talk, we're Green Team is meeting later this month to talk about future events. Um, but we hope to use the, the farmer's market more and more readily. When I went to take down the, um, the exhibit today to pick up the exhibit that you guys neatly packed up, uh, Tom Carey said, no, leave that here. We'll, we'll give out the. It's all month, right? We're, we've got the solar tour going all month. So he offered to keep the, the easel out and tell people about it. So, and distribute some literature. So he's a real asset, I think, to our, to our efforts on the energy team. Um, we still haven't heard on the grant from the, on the recycling center, but hopefully we'll have more to update next month on that. It's been fascinating to hear the conversation. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut up, but if you have any questions about my update, let me know. Any, any questions for Leroy? Or, okay. Okay, moving right along then. Uh, Courtney, Board of Trustees, is there anything you'd like to mention about the Board of Trustees? Nothing new. Um, I know I mentioned, I think I mentioned um, that the, Board had approved um, additional green grants for FY22, as well as additional solar um, appropriations for solar, and then also um, additional appropriations for the wetland education campaign. So um, without much restriction. So I thought that was fantastic. I guess if you ask, you potentially can get so. And could you, do, do you remember the dollar amount? Um, I do. So for the green grants, we kept it at the same for 10,000. Um, so again, why I, and I maybe should have uh, expounded upon that for, uh, for um, I forget our teacher. I want to say Brenda, but I know that wasn't her name. Bridget. Yeah. Bridget, thank you. Um, so there will be an additional 10,000 for FY22 um, for wetland, um, campaign, I asked for five, so they gave us the five. And then solar, we asked for 200, but we compromised on um, 100,000 for additional solar. Um, and, and we're still on track for our 100% solar power for the township buildings for 2024. So um, so we're making great progress and um, the, uh, the township itself and or uh, direct Deputy Director Perry has been very helpful in identifying where those sites might be and what would be the most effective place for that. So he's been very involved and, and fantastic about that. So, um, yeah, so that I think that's very great news. Um, that's great news. All good news. <laughs> all good news. 
Yeah, wow, okay. A Brownfield Redevelopment Authority. Ned, anything to we share? Did meet, we met on the 16th and uh, we just, mostly we were reviewing uh, the, uh, well, the, it was basically the report, the annual report for the Brownfield Redevelopment, uh, whatever it is, <laughs> authority, that's the word. Um, so there are five projects underway of which only one has reached a point of potentially beginning to capture tax. And the one that one is the one uh, down at the corner of um, Okemos and Jolly, where there's a whole a set of apartments that were that were built there behind the um, sort of behind the Applebee's and so forth. Um, and those are uh, there are three phases, uh, two phases are complete and uh, the occupancy of those apartments is already, I think, approaching 80%. Uh, and so the tax recovery of improving that, that area uh, is uh, beginning to be um, anticipated. Unfortunately, the one, the one piece that was missing from this uh, report was uh, the actual value of, of taxes so, so far recovered. And I, I actually put out a request to the chair uh, and to the uh, to the um, township manager to see if I can get an update on that, but I don't have the actual number. But yeah, it's uh, that that project is actually approaching um, completion. The third phase, of course, in fact, all of these projects have been impacted by the increased materials costs and things like that that came up in the course of uh, COVID. I mean, literally things like lumber have gone up by a factor of two or more. Uh, and, and so just uh, the way that people estimated the costs of projects uh, has been, you know, has had to be revised significantly. Anyway, that overall project looks like it's almost $13 million worth of, of investment that's gone into building those buildings and, and so forth. And if you walk around there, it's actually, it's, it's not very township-like in the sense that it's lots and lots of units. It's a hundred and, uh, what's the number, 287 apartments and they're not very big they're sort of a thousand square feet and and 700 square feet there but there are a lot of people who work at jackson life and so forth so they the occupancy is, is going up fast and so that seems to be a success the other ones are all in midstream um, various projects just to remind you there's another one that's right next to that which is for businesses which used to be an old tire place um, and that's um, Again, uh, a little bit slowed down because of the materials, but uh, is uh, it's still on the books. The Hazlitt Marathon is uh, some people don't like it because it's so close to the curb uh, in terms of ramping the sidewalk and changing how much you can see uh, around the corners of the intersection. But that's in the middle of uh, going up, and, and it's eventually going to be a combination gas station and. Um, convenience store, restaurant. Um, and then a couple of other projects, uh, the, um, the village of, uh, sorry, the village of Okemos, uh, as you know, has been on, on hold for a while. Again, that's a materials thing and the township is trying to uh, negotiate with them about when they're gonna, well, Courtney probably knows more, more than I do about that, uh, when they're gonna um, get the project going again. And then the, the final one is this, um, it's, it's where old Mr. R's uh, uh, driving school was uh, in the Hazlitt, this southwest corner of Hazlitt and uh, Marsh Road. On the back there, there's gonna be um, mixed use uh, living units and commercial. And um, that's, uh, they've done a little bit of cleaning up of the area, but they haven't, haven't begun any significant building yet. So anyway, that's the story there. Thank you, Ned. Yeah. Uh, land preservation. Um, land preservation met on uh, September 8th um, and uh, talking about Davis Foster. Um, being the most ecological diverse area in Ingham County. Um, we discussed um, the wetland um, ordinance and buffer code um, and desire to protect trees and vernal pools, maybe in conjunction with those. 
Um, and uh, there was some talk about partnering with the Environmental Commission on some of these projects, um, which we can talk more about um, at another time. And I, you know, and I'll just add my tree team update. You know, I will be meeting with um, Steve Thomas um, from uh, Land Preservation to talk about um, the tree ordinance and desire to protect more trees. So I'll combine two for one right now. So thank you. Okay, let's see. Uh, well, let's see. I don't see Bill anymore. So moving past the Planning Commission, Transportation Commission. Uh, uh, yeah, again, Bill. Earth Club and student groups. Uh, did uh, any of the students want to kind of add anything? Luca. Audrey was here, but now she's not. So I, I don't know if uh, Bernadette's got anything, but Audrey's really the, the uh, I think she's the co-president of the uh, Earth Club. So I don't think there's any more like leadership positions on the uh, like that, that are on the uh, Environmental Commission. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, energy team. Uh, I'll just mention that you know uh, Leroy mentioned the three of us were at the uh, farmers market and it was uh, a great day. I think we talked to about forty people who had a lot of very good questions about. Uh, you know, going solar and, uh, you know, a lot of people who are seriously thinking about it and uh, related to what uh, Courtney said too, you know, the uh, with respect to the township facilities, because uh, I'm somewhat aware of what's going on around the state. Uh, Meridian Township is doing very well in moving aggressively toward our goal of 100% renewable energy for electricity for our operations. And uh, it's really, uh, nice to be able to talk to citizens about the fact that uh, we already have four installations and we're moving ahead on, uh, you know, additional installations. So we're, we're making really good progress. And like Valerie mentioned, you know, we, we are, the energy team's in the process of planning a solarized project, which would be uh, neighborhood workshops for the most part with group discounts. So that's uh, uh, coming right up and we're in the process of kind of planning that right now. Uh, the idea being most workshops would be uh, uh, probably in the spring, uh, starting in March. And uh, environmental justice. I'll just briefly say that um, Courtney and I have been working on equity issues. Okay, okay. Uh, well, green infrastructure grants. Uh, Leroy, did you have anything you wanted to mention about Montessori? Just that they will be with us next month to give a uh, report. And so we'll hear from them. That that's that's excellent, because uh, I think we we all enjoy those reports. So that's great. Uh, green neighbors, I don't probably think there's anything to report. Uh, no, but uh, one I did that occurred to me when we were talking about a board of advisors or just people that might have expertise. Maybe maybe some aspect of the green neighbors network could have these people that are like Ned, who's an, a chemist, or Bill, mm -hmm. uh, who's an expert on composting or whatever. Um, Anna, food, just people um, recognized or resource people that the public would approach with those related questions. Maybe with Tom at state government, or I'm just thinking out loud, but uh, rather than having a whole another advisory board, maybe a sort of an informal network of experts, self designated. So, I, I, just a thought. Yeah, I think that's a good idea, like has been expressed before. Why don't we put on the agenda for the next meeting to brief, briefly talk about it? Because I think that's uh, worth figuring out if we could have some resource per people and, you know, uh, how do, how would we recruit them? How we would use them? The Green Neighbor Network's a good example. Just advising us would be really helpful. Uh, so, yeah, let's, let's talk some more about that at the next meeting. Expert yeah. janitors that know how to uh, kick some booty. That's that would be good too. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, we've uh, covered tree team, and I think we probably covered wetland education. Anything more about that, Kendra? Oh, go go ahead. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, anything else in any public remarks? We've kind of gone through the list. This has been a very productive meeting, I think, and I've really enjoyed the presentation. Other sort of comments before we kind of uh, adjourn for the evening. Okay, I don't see anything. So, hey, thank you, everybody. And I look forward to seeing you again next month. Take care. Thank you. 
Thank you. Nice job, John, as yeah. usual. Great job, John. Yep, agreed. <laughs>